Hi guys, this is a video to help you understand how you can use the microscopes and learn the microscope part so that you're A, able to pass the microscope quiz with at least a 16 out of 20 or better, and do the microscope lab, which is lesson two. So um, there are lots and lots of tips and tricks for using the microscope, and you really need to learn all of the parts to be successful in using them. And it takes a lot of practice to get really good at focusing and finding things under the microscope. So I actually have a couple different microscopes here with me at the desk. I have one of the older microscopes that we've had here in the school for quite a while and one of the newer ones that we just got in the last couple of years. Both are examples of compound light microscopes. And the reason that they're considered compound is because they have two lenses, one in the eyepiece <clears throat> and one um, in the objective, and each objective has its own lens. Now there are other kinds of microscopes. You can certainly read about them in the slides and online. There are other microscopes that use a beam of electrons to either scan the surface of something very tiny. Um, those are called scanning electron microscopes. And then um, a transmission electron microscope can actually pass the beam of electrons through a specimen to see things very, very tiny. For instance, you can see the inside organelles of a, of a cell, like for instance, the mitochondria. Whereas in our compound light microscopes, we're not using a beam of electrons, we're using light. And we might be able to see the nucleus, perhaps the chloroplast, but that's um, pretty much our limitation. So our compound light microscope has many important parts. And it's important that you're able to label a diagram of a microscope. Um, if you're in class or can send one, um, someone to get a paper copy of the notes, those are very, very helpful. There are also online activities where you can match the microscope part to the microscope diagram online. <clears throat> but practice takes perfect. So this is our compound light microscope. Um, this, as I mentioned, is the eyepiece. And the eyepiece contains a lens that magnifies 10 times. So the eyepiece alone can magnify 10 times. Okay? We want to make sure that we're never touching the eyepiece, um, not just for COVID reasons. Um, we don't want to touch the eyepiece because um, our fingerprints have oil on them, and we certainly don't want to get any oil or makeup or anything like that. If you think your eyepiece has been touched or has a fingerprint or is smudgy, you can let your teacher know, and whoever's in the classroom can use one of these special wipes, and we can just take one of these wipes and gently wipe off the lens. And these don't leave any lint and they don't scratch, okay? So this is not a tissue box. This is not for blowing your nose, okay? This is for wiping off lenses. And they can be used to wipe off the lenses in the objectives, but those don't get touched nearly as much, at least they shouldn't. So we have the eyepiece. Um, sometimes this part here is called the body tube. Um, microscopes come in a variety of different shapes, so um, it might not be um, configured quite like this. We have an arm, okay? The bottom is called the base. And let me show you on the other microscope. Okay, so this is the body tube. There's actually um, a mirror inside to direct the light through the lens, down through the objective. Okay, has an arm, has a base, all right? And sometimes people get caught up when they're labeling microscopes because the diagram doesn't look exactly like the microscope they have in front of them or in class. And that's okay. The, the parts are still the same. They might be in a different location or a slightly different shape. Okay. Um, the nose piece is this rotating um, area that holds all the different objectives. Now, one of the things I do when I'm troubleshooting with students that call me over and they say, Mrs. Bragg, everything's black, I can't see anything. One of the first things I do is I turn the nose piece to make sure that it's clicked into place. If it's not clicked into place, there won't be any light passing through the lenses. Okay, so the rotating nose piece is right here. These are the objectives. Now, I mentioned that the objectives have lenses in them as well. The shorter objectives have a lower magnification of the lens inside. So this one is red and it's labeled with the number four. The lens inside this short, low power objective has a magnification of four times. Now, if you're looking through the eyepiece at something under the microscope on low power, the total magnification is actually 10 times four. So our low power magnification magnifies the specimen on the slide 40 times. 
Okay, so that's still quite a bit of magnification. Um, far more than just a single magnifying glass or your glasses. If you turn it to the middle objective, this one's labeled um, with yellow and it has the number um, 10 on it. This is the medium power. Its total magnification is 10 times 10 or 100 times magnification. And the highest power we have in our classroom microscopes is a magnification of 40 times 10, so 400 times magnification. And this microscope is very similar to our older microscopes. These still have a rotating nose piece, they're color coded, and these are 4, 10, and 40. So low, medium, and high are still 40, 100, and 400 times magnification. And almost all eyepieces in the classroom microscopes are 10 times magnification. Even if you have a microscope that has two eyepieces, okay, or binocular viewing, they both have 10. It doesn't change the total magnification. Okay, so um, these newer microscopes have a, a lot more, I think, easy to use functions as far as putting the slide on the stage and finding things. So we would always want to start, oh, and if you're wondering, this is a teacher version that has an oil immersion objective. Um, this is a special objective that students won't be using, but it does magnify a thousand times, which makes it very handy to see bacteria. However, you need a special kind of oil to put on the slide um, to view. So, the low power objective is where we start. Before we even put a slide on the stage, we want to make sure that we're on low power. Um, you'll find out why in just a minute. These um, new stages actually have a spring-loaded clip, and I'll turn this down just so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, this is a spring-loaded clip. I kind of think of it as a claw that holds the slide into place, and I'll show you what it looks like when one's on. Okay, it actually holds the slide into place. And then underneath of the uh, stage, you can actually use these knobs to move the slide around. So the way we would do this on the older microscopes took a little bit more practice. Um, instead of a nice claw, we would have two clips and we would have to physically move the slide around to look for our specimen. So this kind of takes the guesswork <clears throat> out of which way we want to move. The slide. So if I were starting to look, and this is a, a leaf cross section, and I wanted to find the leaf, first thing I would do is I would make sure that I could, um, if possible, see what's on the slide and center it over the hole in the stage. We want to make sure the light source is on, and underneath the stage is the diaphragm, which on our new ones has a little lever that lets in different amounts of light. So in most cases, we want the maximum amount of light, and you're, um, you can feel free to have the diaphragm open. If you're just checking out some different kinds of slides, you might adjust that to see um, if it's easier to see something very tiny. Like, for instance, sometimes it's easier to see bacteria if the light is a little bit lower. We want to start on low power, and we want to look through the eyepiece to see if we can see anything. Um, again, troubleshooting, if it's black, you might need to click your nose piece and objective into place. I have had students tell me that they forgot to turn their light on, okay, and make sure it's plugged in. And you're going to look through the eyepiece and you're going to use the coarse adjustment. And on most microscopes, this is the, the larger of the two knobs. In this case, the knobs are in the same place. So the larger outside knob is um, the coarse adjustment. And the coarse adjustment, as you can see, moves the stage up and down, okay? And um, as soon as you've focused, Whatever you're looking for, you're, you're welcome to use the fine tuning or the fine adjustment on low power as well. Um, if you're asked to draw something on low power, you can note the magnification. In this case, it's 40 times magnified. You can draw what you see. Or if you're ready to move on to the next power um, objective, here are a few tips. Most eyepieces have built in a little um, pointer needle. And some students are like, is there something on my slide? What is this? What is this? Um, you really need to have your specimen centered before you go to the next highest power objective. So imagine this is low power and you have a really big um, range of view. When you go to the next power objective, it shrinks considerably. So anything on the perimeter is going to disappear. So if you have your specimen centered, using the pin in the eyepiece 
you can be pretty confident that when you switch to the next power objective that your specimen will still be centered. And sometimes it's just not there and I always suggest to students just go back to low power and start over again. So let's say everything was lined up and you had it exactly where you wanted, you would go to the next power objective and we don't ever want to skip um, the, the middle objective. If we're, if we're trying to get to the highest magnification, we still have to do a pit stop at the medium objective so that we can make sure that what we're looking at still in our field of vision. Now, from here on out, you're totally allowed to move the stage. Maybe something you were looking at is kind of off to the side and you want to recenter it. That's fine. But from here on out, from medium to high power, you're only allowed to use the fine tuning or the fine adjustment knobs. And part of the reason is the slide is now very, very close to the objective lens. And many, many slides have been broken as the stage moves up the objective can crunch the slide. And once they're cracked, they're really no good. And if you break it, you buy it. So make sure that you're being very, very careful with slides. So if everything looks the way you want it, you can stop, you can draw what you see on medium power. And then if you're ready, you can work your way to a high power. And again, you're only using the fine knobs to, to magnify. Okay, um, you can certainly move the stage at this point. You can adjust the amount of light and you can look at what you need to see. Not everything is best viewed at high power. For instance, if you're looking at a cross section of a leaf or a stem, um, once you zoom in, it's really, um, it's hard to tell that you're looking at a stem. You can just see a whole bunch of circles. When you see the whole picture on low power, it kind of makes more sense that you're looking at the cross section of a root or a stem or a leaf. All right, so you're gonna get really good at finding things, magnifying, you're gonna look at a whole variety of different kinds of slides in your lab. You're gonna look at things that take up the whole um, field of vision, um, some things that are very, very tiny, and you're gonna be sketching things at low and either medium or high power. Okay, so when we're all done with the microscope, um, for this particular year um, with COVID, we're gonna make sure that we're wiping off all the touch points. So your teacher will make sure that the knobs and anything that may be um, touched like the stage are wiped off with the disinfecting. It's really, really important that you're not touching the eyepiece at all, not with your eye, not with your face or your hands. If that happens, let us know and we'll take care of it. But we're not going to cover the microscopes when we're done like we normally would have so we can get through and, and wipe things down kind of quickly. You want to make sure that you turn your nose piece back to low power, you're going to take the slide off the stage, and we always hold the slides by the label or on the edges, okay? Um, if you touch the, the part of the slide where the specimen is, the fingerprints can leave a lot of smudges. Again, if you think you've got something um, smudgy on a slide, let your teacher know, and we can use the same wipes that we use for the lenses on the slides. And slides should always be returned where you found them. It's a big pet peeve of mine when people put a leaf slide back in the box labeled stems. Don't do it. It actually tells you exactly what's on the slide if you use the label. So again, practice makes perfect. Use your diagrams to practice labeling. Learn all the parts. Learn what the parts do. How to determine what magnification you're on. Use the online games and simulators. You guys can quiz each other. You can sit right at a desk with one of these microscopes and literally just point at the parts and ask your partner what each part does or what it's called. Once you've successfully passed your microscope quiz with at least a 16 out of 20, and you can take it as many times as you need, you'll be ready to move on to lesson two in the lab. And the bonus is if you get done with the lab early, you can look at other slides from my slide box that aren't a part of the um, lab and I will be bringing in an onion and setting up a station where you can actually make your own slide, stain it, and look at an onion peel under the microscope. And that's pretty fun. Unfortunately, this year we won't be able to do the cheek cells because of the germs and issues with germs on your spit. So that will be one that I can show you as a class demo if we have time. So good luck and make sure that you email me if you have any questions or if you need help on learning the parts of the microscope.